for more on the Strohs, we go out to the HR and P guest line right now. We bring on the pre and post game host on AT and T Sportsnet for your Houston Astros. Kevin Eschenfelder joins us now. Kevin, it's Jake and BK. Thanks so much for a couple minutes today. Hope all is well. Oh, everything's good. How are you guys doing? We're doing great, Kevin. So let's start with Justin Verlander. We opened our show today talking about this guy. Are you surprised, not that he's Justin Verlander, that he's really, really good, but that he's this good this quickly after not pitching the last two years, basically? I think uh, everybody is everybody is surprised, not that he has been good, but that he has been as good as he has been. I mean, he's, he's been great. You make the argument he's been the best pitcher in, in, in the big leagues. Uh, so, yeah, at 39 coming off Tommy John, I mean, it's uncharted territories. Nobody knew exactly what to expect. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a... Uh, at 39 years old, it almost reminds me a little bit of what Randy Johnson did when he got a uh, little, little bit older and a little bit uh, further down in his career, and also what uh, Nolan Ryan was able to do at that advanced age. And, and I mean, it's just a number. I mean, I say age, but it's just a number for Dustin Verlander because he does what he wants to do. Uh, you want to see a guy in control of every single at-bat. I mean, he, 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 when you can put the baseball exactly where you need to do it, and then on a day when you really maybe aren't able to do that, your command is not as good as it, it has been, and that was yesterday, you can reach back and get 97 and 98. That, that, that's a luxury that, that not a lot of people have. But, I mean, he's been phenomenal. The whole pitching staff has been phenomenal. In fact, it's been historically good. So it's been, it's been a lot of fun to watch, and the reason they are where they are right now is because of that pitching staff and the fact that they still don't think it's hit their stride offensively. Uh, it's been the pitching that's really kept them in games and has, has won games for them. Kevin, sticking with Justin Verlander and kind of following up on that surprise theme, are you a little bit startled to see how many pitches Justin Verlander has thrown early on this year? Right before the year started, Dusty and James Click kind of talked about easing Justin Verlander back into things, maybe putting a cap at 100 pitches for all of his starts. He's gone over 102 of his last three. Are you at all surprised to see just how many pitches he's been able to throw this early on? I think everybody is. I don't know about a surprise uh, because of the fact that I think Justin Verlander is not one of those guys that you have to protect him from himself. He knows his body. He understands uh, the importance of what his presence is, and uh, he is going to do what, what he knows he can do. And uh, I just don't think that there was ever a question. I don't think Justin Verlander is going to go, you know what, I think I can go out here and pitch the eighth inning and give you, give you another, another three outs. Justin Verlander knows whether he can do that. And, uh, and I think at this point in his career, and given the injury and given the Tommy John and given the return and the recovery and everything else, I, I think he is uh, smart enough, wise enough, a veteran enough, and realistic enough to tell everyone what the situation is. Kevin Eschenfelder is our guest, Houston Astros pre- and post-game host on AT&T Sportsnet, joining us here on the HRNP guest line. Kevin, three more hits yesterday for Yuli Gurriel. Do you think we're we're back to seeing the Yuli of last year going forward this season? Yeah, I think so. I think, I mean, death taxes that Yuli can hit. I mean, he <laughs> hit a ton of home. He felt like he could hit it. Well, nobody got a ton of at-bats in spring training. But remember, he had a bunch of home runs. I mean, it was 101 at-bats or whatever it was before he hit his first one. Uh, but he's really just batting average 50 points in the last uh, five games, I think. He's gone for like 198 to 248, and uh, the fact that he is he's hitting the ball hard the opposite way, and you guys know as well as I do, when you start seeing guys like that, they're starting to get locked in, and 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 that's I think it's just a matter of you know you go back to guys are going to get into slumps. Some guys start the season in slump, but I think I think Yuli may have been that guy. Uh, do I think he's going to hit 330 like he did last year, or whatever it was, 319 or whatever it was he did last year? No, but uh, Yuli Gurriel, I don't think it's going to be a He's not going to be a 235 hitter, and, uh, and yeah, it's just a matter of time. And it, the time is now, right now, that he's he's starting to pick it up. And, and when he, you know, his ability, to, you know, extends his arms, he, he can he can do damage. And he won't. He's not afraid to shoot the ball the other way. And then if you try to try to throw him in, and nobody pulls their hands in and gets to a gets the heat on the inside corner any better than Yuli Gurriel can get the barrel to the ball on an inside pitch that a lot of guys can't get to. Kevin, there have been some tremendous storylines over the first month and a half of the season for this Astros ball club. My favorite storyline has been the emergence of Jeremy Pena. What can you tell us about Jeremy Pena coming back from that knee injury, but also what have you liked about what you've seen from him through the first six or seven weeks of the season? 
Yeah, I, I think they're just uh, erring on the side of caution with him. I think he's out of the lineup again today, so it's uh, it's a matter of you know rather better to bring him in a day later than a day early. You know what I mean? It's so uh, it's they're gonna they're seeing how his deals because it's not just a matter of being able to say oh yeah, Jeremy Payne is good to go today. He's doing light running and he's running, and then they're gonna. It's not what he does when he's actually working on that knee. It's, it's the next day and how he feels. And so, uh, you know, get him right and get him ready because, I mean, Jeremy Payne is present. He's the son of a big leaguer. You know, you, you know that. And, and uh, you know, Dusty Baker managed, got his first managerial win. Uh, the leadoff man for the uh, St. Louis Cardinals that day, the opponent, was, was Jeremy Payne's dad. And so he's been around the big leagues, and he acts like he's been around the big leagues. Uh, Brian Bogusevic and I were watching a uh, – we were watching a replay the other day. I mean, he scored on a. It was in Minnesota. And he scored on a on a sacrifice fly. And this is the little, the, the 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 small nuances that you just look at a guy and you go, yeah, that dude looks like he belongs. He went back to the bag and, and tagged up and scored from third base on a just absolutely flying on a on a ball that was in foul territory. It wasn't very deep. But the way he went back to the bag, with no, there was no hurry. There was just a calm and a confidence and. And just knew the situation. It, it, it was. It, it's hard to really explain unless you saw it. But you just thought that that's that's a big leaguer right there. But he's nothing has been. Uh, I mean, nothing has been too far down the road for him. He is everything has just come slow. The game. Uh, I think the game was a little quick at the beginning in the first couple of weeks for him. I, I thought uh, defensively he probably wasn't as aggressive as he should have been. He probably stayed back on some balls kind of ate him up a little bit, but, but he learned. And I think the same thing has happened. You know, you know, a lot of guys can come to the big leagues and they can hit velocity, but they can't hit spin. And, man, he showed that, uh, you know, throw him a slider on the outside corner now and he'll hit it into right field, driving a couple of runs with it. We saw him do that in Minnesota the other night. I mean, he's, he's been amazing. I mean, 20 RBIs, uh, one of the leaders, uh, the leader as far as rookies is concerned. And then you talk about he's one of the leaders on this team as well. And he's been nothing short uh, of – it's really been a yeah, best case scenario it's it's may 16th i get it but it, it's been a it's been a best case scenario start for jeremy Pena. kevin eschenfelder with us here on the wheelhouse joining us on the hr and p guest slide kevin astros fans have had a love-hate relationship with jake oda rizzi who starts tonight against the red sox where are you at with oda rizzi should astros fans believe that the jake we've seen in his most recent couple starts is the guy that they could see going forward I, I do because I, the thing is, is, he's a different Jake than the one that pitched uh, uh, against the Angels three was it four starts ago? Whenever he went two thirds of an inning, got two guys out and gave up six runs per inning. Um, he is the guy that changed what he did. I mean, you remember he was a, he was a pitcher that relied a lot on the split finger fastball, and, and it just wasn't effective. And now he's kind of gotten away from the split, not kind of, he's gotten away from the split center fastball. He's starting to attack the top of the zone with the four seam. And, and uh, he's doing that, that, and he's mixed in the cutter. And it has been, I was at 15 and two thirds that I think he's working on scoreless right now. He's got I me mean, look at his hits. I think he's given up something like six hits in his last three starts. Uh, he's been, you know, I, I think, I think he's earned the benefit of anybody's thought right now with what he's done in the last three starts. So yeah, I'm all in on Jake Utterson. Kevin, what are your thoughts on the six-man rotation? Do you think this is something that should and likely will stay beyond this stretch of 17 games in 17 days? Uh, no, I don't because uh, you want guys pitching. You know, they're going to start getting these veterans to start pitching on their regular rest. I don't think it's, you know, it's just such a difficult. It's, it's great when it's great because, you know, we all know the case. Why wouldn't you do it all the time? Because it, it can fill your bullpen if you have a guy that goes out and gives you, you know, three innings. Uh, and that's why. Um uh, so, no, I don't think they'll do it on a regular basis, but they're probably going to, you know, guess you stay with it while while you can. But when things start to settle down, you know, you remember there, not only were they in a stretch of 17 games in 17 days, but they're also in a stretch of 33 games in 34 days, if my math is all right. So, uh, you know, when the schedule starts to, you know, there's those ebbs and flows in the schedule and, and, and somewhat anomalies here and there. But I think once the schedule becomes a little more normal, they had a lot of off days. You remember in the first three weeks of the season, it felt like they had felt like they had two off days a week in the, the first uh, first three or four weeks of the season. But I think that'll start to, to even itself out. Kevin, in addition to doing the Astros on at and Sportsnet, you also call the Cougars football games on radio, and you work with our friend Jeremy Branham. So I got to ask, <laughs> any funny or embarrassing Jeremy Branham stories that you could share with us? Jeremy Brown is one of the one of the 
see, you want me to say something, and I and I, I just, Jeremy, you just can't do that. I can't even <laughs> joke about Jeremy being anything other than just a wonderful human being. You know it, I know it, and just he knows it. Hey, he's a great guy. He's a, he's a wonderful guy, and a, he's a very, very good friend. And, and uh, we have on those broadcasts between you know, me and Ted Party and, and, and Jeremy, we have so much fun. And the reason we have fun is not it, it's not just a job, but because of uh, we're friends, and uh, we all. Well, enjoy being being together. The dinners, the night before the games, the games, all the way around. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Jeremy, Jeremy is as good as it sounds. You can call him a diva, Kevin. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know he does like his hair, and uh, yes. I'm thinking that probably that would probably be there. But then again, hey. If you have hair like that, why wouldn't you, right? <laughs> there you go. Kevin Eschenfelder has been our guest here on the HRP Guest Night. Kevin, great to get you on, man. Been a fan of yours for a long time. Thanks so much for a couple minutes, and good luck with the pre- and post-game later tonight. Appreciate you having me on. Thanks, guys. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, hit the like button down below, and, of course, subscribe to my channel. And if you're a Houston sports fan, Listen to ESPN Houston 97.5 FM or 92.5 FM weekdays from 3 to 7 every afternoon.